Hello friends, in today's video, we shall see the concept of production function. A production function of a firm shows the technological relationship between inputs used and the output produced by the firm. So in simple terms, a production function shows the maximum amount of output that can be produced by the firm with various quantities or combinations or various proportions of inputs. In the short run, it is called law of variable proportions whereas in the long run, they are laws of returns to scale. Now the law of variable proportions is also known as returns to a factor because the change in output is explained with respect to change in one variable factor while keeping all other factors as constant. While in the long run, all factors become variable including the technology. So, the increase in total output with respect to increase in all the factors of production in the same proportion is what is called the returns to scale. So, we shall see the production function for a single input with the help of a graph. So, in this graph, we can see that x-axis measures the number of laborers and y-axis measures the number of units of output. And here, we are getting an upward sloping production function. So, this shows that when more and more units of labor is employed, the output is increasing. So, here, output is a function of labor while all other factors are considered as constant. Similarly, we can explain the same concept by using capital as the way variable input that is by measuring capital on the x axis and the number of units of output on the y axis we again get a similar upward sloping production function and this production function shows that output increase with increase in the number of units of capital provided all other factors are remaining constant. Now in the first diagram we can see that we are explaining the production function with respect to change in labor while capital and all other factors are held constant. Now suppose if any of the factors which are held constant increase then the production function will shift upwards implying that the output has also increased. We shall explain the production function for a single input with the help of a numerical and will represent the table in the form of a graph. So in this table we can see the number of workers and the corresponding total output produced with respect to increase in the number of workers. And if we represent this table onto a graph we get an upward sloping production function as shown in the diagram. So here we can see that when the first labor is hired the first labor is producing a total output of 50 units. When the second labor is hired, together the two laborers are contributing a total output of 90 units, whereas the marginal productivity of the second labor is only 40 units. That is, the second labor is contributing 40 units to the total output. Similarly, by employing the third worker, all the three workers together are contributing a total output of 120 units, whereas the marginal productivity of the third worker is only 30 units. So, here we can see that the total total output is increasing with the employment of each workers but the marginal productivity of each of those workers is decreasing. That is why the law of variable proportions is also known as the law of diminishing marginal returns or diminishing marginal productivity. Now this is the case of short run production function. Now what happens if there are two variable inputs say labor and capital are varying in the long run. How will we represent the production function? So if there are two variable inputs labor and capital we can represent the production function in the form of an isoquant. So an isoquant shows the various combinations of two factors of production, labor and capital, for producing the same level of output. So in the diagram, we can see that output Q is represented by the isoquant and that Q level of output can be produced by using varying proportions of labor and capital. So two combinations have been shown here, denoted as point A and B. So in order to produce the same level of output Q, we can see that at point A, more capital and less labor is used and at point B more labor and less capital is used. Point A clearly shows a capital intensive production method and point B shows a labor intensive technique. Now the decision of the firm whether to choose the combination A or B is purely dependent upon the factor prices of labor and capital. That is suppose if the wages are greater than the price of capital then it is obvious that the firm will be using more units of capital and lesser units of labor for producing a particular level of output. Now we know both capital and labor are variable inputs. If both capital and labor inputs are increased, then the output also increases, which is represented by an upward shift in the isoquant from Q to Q1, denoted by point C. Here, each isoquant represents varying proportions of labor and capital to produce a particular level of output. We know that a set of isoquants are known as an isoquant map. So here, an isoquant map represents the 
production function of a firm when the inputs are varying in nature. From the isocon map, the firm can decide which level of output to produce and which factor combination to choose based on the factor prices. In short, in the short run, we basically explain the change in the total output due to change in single input, all other factors being held constant. So that is why we are getting an upward sloping production function. Whereas in the long run, when all the factors are variable, then the various combinations of the labor and capital is represented by an isoquan or an isoquan map. The general mathematical form of a production function is Q is a function of L, K, R, S, V and gamma where Q is the total output, L is the labor, K capital, R represents the raw materials, S is the land, V represents returns to scale and gamma represents the efficiency parameter. Here the land is taken together with machinery and equipments that is with the factor K. Why? Because for the whole economy the land will be constant but for the individual firms land is not constant because in the long run individual firms can acquire more land so that is why land is taken together with the capital factor and raw materials are held here as constant so with these changes we can rewrite the production function as q is the function of l k v and gamma here v represents returns to scale that is it refers to the long run analysis of the loss of production why because in the long run this plan size is assumed to change the efficiency parameter gamma represents the entrepreneurial organizational aspect aspects of the production. It means that suppose if there are two firms with same factor inputs but still the two firms will be producing two different levels of output because of the differences in their entrepreneurial and organizational efficiency. So in simple terms the efficiency parameter represents the managerial skills of the firm. Any production function applies to a given technology. Now what is a technology? It means a given state of knowledge about the various methods that might be used to transform the inputs into outputs. Let us take the example of making rotis in a restaurant that we have seen in the video of process of production. When laborers had to manually knead the dough and roll each rotis, it took a lot of time to make the required rotis and so for a given period of time, the number of rotis produced was very low. But with the advancement in technology, the kneading of the dough as well as the pressing or rolling of the rotis are all done by various capital equipments which has made the job more effortless and at a lesser time and with less laborers more rotis can be produced. So in both the cases labor and capital were used but the advancement in the capital good made the work technically and economically efficient and thus more output can be produced in a given period of time. If you like the video do subscribe to my channel and share the videos to maximum. Thank you.